Katie, uh, you and I, and I, you know, this is, we'll call it wisdom, not age. We have seen many of these market runs. We've seen two year down cycles. We've seen a couple month headaches, hiccups, right? In 2020, when the pandemic and the lockdown hits, does this downturn to you look more like a 2001, 2003 painful slow grind down or a March 2020 painful quick time within a nice pop? I would say probably the former, just in that the indicators oh. look almost as bad as the sort of 2008 period, the 2000 period. And there is actually some comparison to 2015-16 as well. So it really is worse than the COVID corrective phase, certainly. And you can feel that in its character. It's been, as you mentioned, a bit more of a slow grind lower where each up day seems to be met with an equal or worse down day. And I think we're seeing more of the same right now. Yeah, okay. Well, I was hoping you kind of wouldn't say that because you know, obviously 2001 to 2002 was a was a was basically a multi-year or at least two-year bear market. The average bear market last thing we had in the early in the show, you know, 11 months and, and you dropped 30%. Anything that looks like that could be the case to you? Any positive technical signs you're seeing, Katie? Well, I do think that this is a cyclical bear in the secular bull. So the bull trend, very long term, is still very much intact. And yet there's still a lot of room to secondary support levels. For the S&P 500, there's some very good Fibonacci-based support of roughly 38.15. That would be an excellent level to see hold. I suspect that after a little stabilization here, it will be broken, however. And that, of course, would increase downside risk to secondary support, 3,500 tertiary support, 3,200. So I do think that we, instead of focus on these key levels near term, we think about more the posture of the indicators that are trying to understand momentum and also trend exhaustion. And right now, the momentum, as you'd imagine, is still very much to the downside, intermediate term, long term. It's actually improving short term. I know it's hard to feel that with this day-to-day -day volatility, but the short term momentum gauges are improving modestly here. And that suggests we'll get a little stabilization and some relief, perhaps, before we see the next breakdown. I, my stat, you, you'll know the stats, I'm sure, Katie. I don't, but, I, but you know the direction I'm going in, which is like we went like a year or two without a 2% move right? or something like that. The markets were bizarrely calm, just kind of grinding higher two-tenths of a percent every single day. Now we're having one and a half to 2% moves, you know, multiple times per week. What's changed? What's happened? I think it's just characteristic of a downtrending market. That's when you tend to see volatility pick up. It's just sort of the norm. We're in this obviously high volatility cycle or regime, and you can see that in measures like the volatility index or VIX. And it's just a much more difficult environment for traders, especially because if you're trying to this market short term, you can easily get whipped one way or the other. So it really makes for a challenging environment in which it's very, very difficult to make money, especially on the upside, because you're sort of counter trend yeah. trading these moves. So we just have been recommending folks are reduced in their overall exposure using hedging strategies, of course, and generally speaking, using any relief rallies as they come to reduce exposure to existing long positions. We still like to pour you the exposure, but sort of being around that to manage risk and, of course, keeping very tight stop losses on any sort of trading oriented positions. You know, energy, of course, I talk a lot about energy, Katie, been following it. It's not. And I've said energy is not an energy story. It's an everything story. Energy is literally just pretty much everything. It's going to be really interesting to see if some of these sort of semi ESG buyers start to find a way to come back into energy because I'm not a technician, but I know enough to look. The charts look pretty good, especially relatively. Are you optimistic on energy? Well, I mean, it's really the only sector that's in the green year to date. And when I say that, I mean, it's really that's in it. the green. It's up like 50% if you look at the S&P 500 sector indices. And in a way, that gives me some pause because you might feel like it's overextended. And yet, when you look at the trends there, they still have momentum behind them. Our TAC ETF has a position in energy and otherwise leans very defensive. So to me, that exposure, hey, listen, for anything working in this side, and it's definitely a place that is working. And as soon as we see some kind of yep. downtick in momentum, then we'll be reactive to that.